Okay, so now I guess we're live. Really? Oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's okay. often like a one minute countdown. I was kind of thinking I <laughs> would get to that. But anyway, um, we have nobody watching us, so no okay. pressure yet. Because we can see up there on the um, left, the eye, there's a zero. That means we have nobody here. It's just us. Oh, I don't I see it. It's fine. But I don't it is- see it yet either, but that's okay. I don't, I don't know. My, my watch just warned me saying that. Jeff Eccles is now live on LinkedIn. Oh, well, here we are. Today we are Jeff Eccles um, <laughs> live on LinkedIn. Are we also on? Can you check and see if we're on Facebook also? Mm-hmm. Let's see. So I have that Facebook restream. Is- if you happen to be on Facebook and you have, oh, nobody's here yet. I don't have to go through that. Let me see here. <laughs> um, I'm checking LinkedIn right now. I'll check Facebook. Mm, um, I'm not seeing it on Facebook. Oh, oh Facebook, I think it's going I see on LinkedIn. I see oh, wait, I thought LinkedIn. I did. Oh, wait, I'm oh. frozen. No, we're on mm. Facebook. You're not frozen here. We can oh. see you. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, this is Context and Clarity Book Club today, and we're going to be talking about, sorry, I'm late. I didn't want to come. And <gasps> Maybe everybody's going to be late because they're not going to come. They, the nobody book. wanted to come. <laughs> and <laughs> we just had to accept it. Sorry, I'm late. I Oh. Yep. So if you turn that on, then it, that'll just have me on there because there's a little bit of a lag. So if you are here, you say hello and we'll know who you are up here in the comments. And so, so Nicole, do you have any headphones? Um, yes. Anyway, if everybody has headphones, that might be better. Or just turn the turn the uh, volume down on, on if you're watching it on another channel. Oh, so just so on. I'm joined today by... Wendy Brown, architect extraordinaire, Western Massachusetts. <laughs> uh, Pam Magnus. Do you want to be called Pam or Pam? Pam is good. Pam from San Diego. And Nicole from Arizona. And um, how many of you did not want to come today? <laughs> to this day? <laughs> it's Friday. You never want to come. I didn't really, I didn't really to want to. No, well, I didn't. I didn't remember being nervous the, on the first first book club. So I thought, okay, well, that's fine. I just won't be nervous today. <laughs> there you go. Excellent. That's good. So, are you nervous now, or did, no? Did your mindset no. works. See, perfect. Yeah. Well, so Nicole, I know you read this book a long time ago, um, and it had some effect yeah. on your life. Yep. Yeah. So I first read this book in 2019. It was. It had just come out. It was about a month after it was released. Um, and that also was, it was right at the end of 2019 that I was taking over my architecture firm from the engineer I'd been working with for my business partner. He had decided he was retiring. Um, so I was kind of in that, like, okay, I'm going to have to like run a business now, I, which means to be able to do that successfully, I actually need to talk to people. Um, and I've always been pretty introverted and very happy with just being at home and being at work and not being involved with anything else and keeping my life close and simple. And so it was, it came into my life at a very good point where I was realizing I needed to be out and talk to people and learn how to talk to people and not be so scared of it. Right. Um, And so, and at that point I was also starting to try and figure out, yeah, even with the beyond the work stuff, I should be getting involved and trying to do more things and just help the community more. And so right after that, I submitted applications to get involved in my HOA on the architectural committee. Like Mm -hmm. that'd be good. And it's close to home and didn't seem too daunting. Um, And it submitted applications to get on one of the city, the city's variance board. And of course, both of those accepted my applications at the same time. So I joined both of those committees right about that time. And well, I guess I had submitted those before I read the book, but then I st- actually started on those committees at the same time I was reading the book. Yeah. So it was perfect timing to where I was like, okay, I need to get out of my comfort zone and I need to get out there. And how do I approach people? And am I going to look stupid anytime I say anything? Mm-hmm. And it really did help me to realize maybe it's not, I mean, if I make mistakes, it's not the worst thing in the world. I'll move on. I'll get over it. Most people may not even notice the little mistakes. Um, It helped me to 
learn how to talk to people on a deeper level when I'm talking to them. Um, that you try and get past the small talk and actually make connections with people. And so it really came in at a good point to help push me out of that comfort zone and to learn from her lessons in the book that I'm not necessarily doing all those things. I have no intention of doing stand up. I have no intentions of just going and traveling around the world to with random people and not knowing where I'm going or any of that. But <laughs> it definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone. So, all right. Well, that's cool. And when was that? When did you read that? Like when it came out? 2019. Like it was that's like July of 2019. Out. So it's about three yeah. years ago. Okay. And what about you, Wendy? Did you, when did you read the book? Uh, I finished it about two weeks ago. So okay. I, I so read it during the regular book club time. It was so good though. I just kept, kept reading. And um, so I finished it early. Of course I got it out digitally too. So I did have a bit of a time, you know, I had to finish it before <laughs> 14 days time. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it was it was really funny. It was good. I normally read nonfiction, so which I guess this is kind of nonfiction. Yeah, it's nonfiction. Yeah. I mean, who um, knows how much fiction's involved? We can ask her <laughs> next week. But right. Um, yeah, in theory, it's just a memoir, right? Yep. Yeah. So um Rod That's and Chris good. are here. Hi. I was um I would have not expected any less of you than to be late. <laughs> are they late because here. they didn't want to come? <laughs> Good question. Uh, what what did you read the book, Pam? I read it a couple weeks ago on the plane. So on the way to Oregon and on the way back, I finished it in that time frame. Wow. And All I right. enjoyed it. It made the fight go much faster. Yeah. I mean, I suggested that we read this book because we're talking to Jessica Pan next, um, you know, next week. So I thought, well, that would be a good thing to for have more of us read her book, right? But um, when I was reading the book, I could not believe I suggested that we read this book as a book club for the architecture <laughs> group. And um, and I also couldn't believe that Jeff agreed to it. So I... <laughs> well, I think uh, Jeff yeah. agreed to it before he read the book. Yeah, he did. So. He did. Neither one of us had read the book. And I figured, well, let's just read this book. And <laughs> compared to last month's book, wasn't last month's book... Um, uh, the Seven Habits? Of- yeah, the seven right. habits. So, I mean, I think it's good to mix though. Yeah, some similarities. Well, it's definitely Isn't like when the- she was getting her bikini wax, I thought like <laughs> Okay. But, you know, it turns out that Jeff's not here anyway. So, we can go ahead and discuss bikini waxes to our heart's content. I'm, I'm sure weird. that Chris and Rod would love that too. Get- yeah, I'm sure they would. Discussion. Actually, did they read the book? Did you read the book, Chris? And yeah, Rod? I was wondering that. Our Chris- did Chris and Rod read it? I mean, I think there's a lot of introverts. I don't think, Catherine, are you an introvert? You don't strike me as an introvert, well, but I definitely am. I uh, think I well, first, really I think cool. we should talk about what is an introvert. Yeah, I I need to talk. Did anybody understand the, because I was talking to my daughter and she said, well, you're not really, I don't think you're an introvert. An introvert is a someone who gets their energy from spending time alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. An extrovert gets their energy from spending time with people and you can be a shy introvert which is what is. and then you can be a <laughs> shy extrovert or you can be an outgoing extrovert. and i was like wait a minute wait a minute wait. <laughs> does anybody so what else would we call an outgoing heard? introvert let's call it like a right uh, introvert yeah. for like a bold introvert you could be a bold introvert yeah I that's not me for sure but i she think specu- that's me my daughter speculated that i was a shy extrovert okay so do you feel re-energized yeah. when you're with people yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, I don't feel like I need to spend a bunch of time alone to feel, to re, you know, to re-energize. So I guess that's, mm-hmm. that's, I understand that's kind of All the right, definition. So you're shy extrovert. Well, so then does shy it apply? Extrovert. Like, do you think that, okay, we'll just go around and take an inventory. So Pam, are you um, in uh, a shy introvert? Would you say? <sighs> extrovert. Oh, introvert. Introvert. I, well, I'm good one-on-one. I'm very social. I can talk your ear off (laughs) one-on-one but in groups like if you're afraid to do anything in groups like that's Mm. hard for me so I consider that an introvert like she was trying to reach out like even in the book all those things she was doing the comedy club and all that stuff I thought oh those are really big jumps (laughs) 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they really are. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that in a second. I guess Rod, um, Chris is leaving already. So wow. Oh well, so there, it looks like there are eight people, and only two people I know of who are here are were Chris and Rod. So if you're here, say hi in the chat so we can include you in the conversation. Rod says I'm not an introvert, but I like being alone and often don't like people. I am so with you. I'm really, that's kind of me too. Particularly where I live now, I didn't read it. So I am waiting on you, on your book reports. All right. That's <laughs> fair. None of the guys here read about the bikini waxes. That's so. it, but we told them about. <laughs> that's interesting. Rob thinks it he's not, not an introvert, but likes being off and, lo- and don't, doesn't like people. I, I yeah, I don't like people. kind of an introvert. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I feel like I am not. Well, maybe sh- that's. Not the, shy, I'm sorry. That, maybe that's like the bold introvert. Yeah, I think that's a bold introvert. Mm. Yeah. yeah, possibly. I think I I've might be a bold been introvert. The, definitely have been the shy introvert. I'm the type when I get done with work, I want to come home. I don't want to deal with people. I don't want to go out anywhere. I've mm-hmm. always told my husband that yeah, when I'm home, I don't want to people anymore. This is my <laughs> safe space. Like, if we want to go out to dinner or something, you better warn me before I get home, because once my shoes are off, I'm not leaving the house again. And I used to be much more shy. Um, That's part of that transition over the last last few years. I'm like, I do need to learn to talk to people. And the more I've done it, the easier it gets. Mm. Yeah, Um, so I think that might be like social anxiety that you can kind of change, whereas like maybe, yeah. Like whether you, like if I'm at a if I'm at a party, I can have a good time at a party until I hit the wall and that's it. I need to go mm-hmm. like right mm-hmm. then. Yeah. Hmm. And so, and I'm not. I I am really really shy sometimes. And yeah, um, I've learned to tolerate being around people and tolerate and enjoy being around people at times too. Mm-hmm. Um, I've learned how to tolerate speaking in front of people, but even that, it was always in like smaller groups too. Even with like the city stuff or whatever, I'm usually not huge groups of people. Um, I'd never done any type of video or live feed publicly streaming on anything until the on right architect stuff. And, <laughs> until yeah. right this moment. You're right. Well, <laughs> I did um, like a backstage one. I did a, did the um, YouTube for Isra at one point. And so I've done some of them and I'm yeah. trying to get more comfortable with doing those things that I'm like, those ones are like permanent record if they're getting put mm-hmm. out there online. So that's mm-hmm. a new one for me to try to uh, get adjusted to that uh, people I don't know are going to see it and yeah. I have no control over it and that's okay. Yep. I just ignore it myself. See, just... Rod said he did con- commission sales. That would be terrifying for me, but that me would too. probably be a good experience, but that is just. <laughs> yeah. It would be pretty draining for me. I think if I had to, um, like when we went to, went to, Ecclestock, I had to leave. Like I didn't go out and do the things at night with people because I just needed to go back to my room. So I was also trying to sleep at that time. So (laughs) I I was trying to do that. Um, Well, okay. So how do you think we can apply her book to our lives as architects? Well, I think feel like like if Rod didn't read it and he's waiting on our book report, we we should kind of give a. So That's she, right. We should give a book her report. Life is, yeah, her life is going really, really badly, and she's getting even more shy and even more introverted, right? And then she decides she wants to change. She, it might change if she does, tries all these things, but I then she goes all in, man. I can't oh believe. My gosh. Oh, yeah. The things that she does would make me throw up, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Quit her job, so, travel, or just she went overboard. goes on the moth. She does improv. She does stand-up comedy. She goes to actually goes to networking events what else does she do she travels to a secret location by herself yeah another country by herself secret location um Um, you already mentioned that wherever people tell her to go where she doesn't know the people and doesn't speak the languages and yeah just kind of takes the leap of faith of getting out there see but a lot of that seemed fun to me and not really like um i don't know i guess a lot of it seemed kind of fun, mm-hmm. but terrifying. Like the idea, yeah. the oh, idea of traveling yeah, to some terrifying. secret location. Yeah. I give that a thumbs up. That would be fun. And terrifying. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, one of the points that always like, stuck with me on it and was the most memorable things that in, that has always stuck in my head, and I always go back to it when I'm worried about how I'm going to look at people, was her very first part where she start goes into the subways in London and starts asking people, so who's the Queen of England? 
And, the first, and she's like, that's a stupid question. Who's, I, I'm going to look stupid going up to people asking who the Queen of England is. First person she asks says it's Queen Victoria. And then she starts doubting and like, wait, that's not who I thought it was. Am I wrong on this? And then other people, some of them said it and some of them got it right. But she was so worried about being the wrong answer and <laughs> realized she wasn't necessarily always the one looking like an idiot because some of the oh. other people were wrong. So it, it's always like, it, it's okay to put yourself out there and say the things. And if you look stupid and it's not the worst thing in the world. Well, I kind of thought they were just giving her a hard time, like saying Victoria, because that's so obviously wrong. Well, right? don't ruin it for me. I like thinking that, that the other people were screwing up. Okay. <laughs> well, I I could have been wrong. I mean, I do listen to it two, two times speed or one and a half. I think I listen to this one at one and a half. Yeah, Who was talking on the audio? She talked with somebody. She, she, she narrated it herself. Oh, oh she did. Oh, it's she good. did? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like especially ones books that have some comedy in them. I always like them when they're doing, you're listening to the audio when they're self narrating it because they sure, do yeah. add to it on those things and you get their personality into it. A yeah, little definitely. Bit more. That, that reminds me, I went to look for her moth um, recording and I, I, I haven't, I'm sure I can find it eventually, but when, it, however I searched, I couldn't find it. So yeah. I thought that would be fun to, to I know, and that seemed terribly brave. That was the first thing yeah, she that is did. Really, before. really, really brave. Also mm -hmm. hard to do. Like it's hard to get on the moth if you even if you want right. to. Right. She's got insider. Uh... Yeah, she had a little. <laughs> you know, so I occasionally I, I um, send messages to Jeff while we're in the middle of these books, and so <laughs> one of the questions I sent to him was like. She never seems to work. Like, it would be interesting to have this kind yeah. of extroverted year if, I mean, I guess obviously her work was writing the book, as he pointed out to me, which I should have realized. <laughs> but she never talked, you know, she had all this time to go do all this stuff. And also her husband, she just ditched him most of the time, I feel yeah. like. <laughs> so. I think it's the author thing. I think it's the time yeah. away for this book. These experiments she's doing for the book, so then she can't back out either. She's got to do them to... To yeah. see if she can do it. So it's. Ex Did you guys ever read the Shonda Rhimes book, um, My Year of Yes? Yeah, I did, but I got really irritated and I couldn't read too much of it. Yeah, it's same premise. You know, she's going to say yes to everything because she, didn't she say she was an introvert? I'm trying to remember. That was a long time ago. But I can't really remember. I think I probably still have the audiobook. I should listen to that too. Yeah, but this was more enjoyable. This one, this one just flowed. It was just entertaining and enjoyable. I think. Um, yeah, which is a nice mix from just business books. You get something out of it without feeling like you've got to take bullet points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's definitely true. But um, the idea of, I, I guess since COVID, I now do not want to leave my house. I have no desire really to leave my house um, and go to any of these things. So the idea of going to improv comedy classes or stand up, the stand up, that gives me just, I just kind of feel nervous for her <laughs> thinking about her flopping on those things because like improv I feel like I feel like in terms of looking like an idiot like improv is just like what you thought of that moment so it's it's mm -hmm. either going to hit or it's not going to hit it seems like there's not as much pressure because you didn't think about it ahead of time but uh, something you've written um you know for an, for a an act like a stand-up act and then that's just nobody likes it that would be oh god I just reading those parts I um or listening to those parts I just felt mm -hmm. I felt it I know because it happened to her. Like she did, kind she did bomb. So oh yeah, she like, did. that's what I'm terrified. The second of. time, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but she, she survived it. Yeah, and she survived it. Have you guys ever done comedy or anything like that? So we have an improv comedy place walking distance from our house, and I always wondered who who took those classes. So now I know. Yeah, well. But my kids, I set them up for my kids who wanted to do it when they were they were homeschooled. So I'd set up classes for them in various things. And um, the improv, I think it's a really good thing to be trained in because they just really thought on their feet. And you can also, it's just positive because you're not ever supposed to say no and, and cut anybody's idea off, right? So you just, you just build on other people's ideas. So I think that's a nice community building type exercise. But I, I would, you know, I could never do it. I mean, I feel like <laughs> the idea of doing it is mm, no. Yeah, but so Kathy, See, but look, Michelle like just that's wrote. what happened to her. Is she mm -hmm. she bombed with with whatever that one was the Indiana Jones thing where she like burned her hand and <laughs> yeah. fell on top of somebody. <laughs> oh, that's and then right. she did it again. She like went and did it again. Ugh, and then I know. she really liked it. So 
I know. I, I know. know. That there's so many opportunities out there that we don't do or we don't take because of the perceived pain we will go through. Yeah. yeah. So and a so lot of times people don't, those things that you're most self-conscious about, most people out there don't pay attention to. They don't notice the little screw ups. They don't notice if you're say the wrong words. They don't notice if your shoes don't match most of the time. Of course, I said that, and most of the time people don't notice, but then there will always be that one person who will. Um, mm-hmm. I will. <laughs> I will. I probably would. <laughs> I don't. I may not say anything. Yeah. I don't pay attention to people's shoes, because if I do, I'll probably trip and fall on my face. But <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, you re- I, it took a long time to kind of learn that most of the things that we worry about other people don't notice or they're not going to worry about. And that's true. Maybe it's because I'm so judgmental myself that it makes me self-conscious. Maybe Mm -hmm. people who are less judgmental aren't as self-conscious because they're not expecting the worst in everybody else or something. I mean, I think architects are a little bit more critical because they have more of an eye. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. that means we're more critical of ourselves too, but we'll notice (laughs) Hmm. So um, let me let me look at some of these comments here. Rod's uh, significant other has met the Queen of England, Victoria. Oh, Victoria. Queen Victoria. <laughs> Michelle's here. Hi, Michelle. See, um, she would do stand up. She would totally do stand up. But you are not an introvert, Michelle. <laughs> no. I don't think so. No. I mean, the thing is, that I used to be really shy when I was younger, and yet I'm not shy. I will talk to anybody. So it was like a weird mix of. Oh. I don't know. Just I, but playing my, as I mentioned, um, like playing my instrument, playing my fiddle, like by myself. Uh, okay. I just remembered another embarrassing story, so I can't even, <laughs> but I'm not over it yet. So I, I, I used to run this fiddle competition and then I gave it to somebody else to run and then they were running it. And I thought, well, I'd made up this new category, which is just like display or I can't remember what it was called some people didn't like competing they just wanted to work on a piece and play it for the judge and then get judged by the judge and so I'm like okay well I'll just do that because usually nobody was there like when I was doing it nobody was there that year that I was participating they decided to put it in the New Hampshire Highland Games um, catalog so people actually came to it (laughs) I, it was a room full of people. In the past, it had been like three people. So I felt I could do that in front of my friends. And I played in the orchestra. I played the fiddle orchestra at the time, which isn't a real orchestra. It's just we play whatever. And I, I, oh, and I got up there and I played. There were so many people. And so I had to turn, I had to close my eyes. No, no, I had to turn around because I didn't want to see the people. So I was like turned around, playing to the corner, shaking so badly that my, my bow was just going like that. All I was really, um, shaking quite a lot. And then, and then the woman who was the judge, who was somebody I'd known from fiddle camp and stuff, she's like, oh, that was beautiful vibrato, which in Scottish fiddling, you don't really use vibrato. And so it was obviously just me shaking a lot. And I didn't know if she was making fun of me or <laughs> she loves vibrato and I don't ever use vibrato except for when my bow is shaking like this. <laughs> it was horrible. Very embarrassing. And I did a very, I'm not over it yet. And in fact, now I'm getting all sweaty. <laughs> thinking about it. But you know what, Nicole, probably nobody cares. And probably the people who are in the audience were like, oh my God, this is, um, you know, people love watching a train wreck anyway. So they probably were entertained. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was so, yeah, so far, at least none of my train wrecks have turned into like viral videos or anything like that. Yep, that's but it's true. one of those things where even if they do, yeah, life goes on. We'll be fine. <laughs> well, I don't know, we were talking about we were talking about embarrassing things this morning on um on Clubhouse. So and one one thing I did that was embarrassing when um now I've forgotten his name. Seth Godin. As long as it's not Farhad. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> um Seth Godin was on and this private chat I was privately chatting. Jeff and I were privately chatting back and forth, but everybody who's on the show can see it. So he could also see it. And we were talking about him in the chat. Like I can't remember oh. what we were saying, but later we were like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't even realize that until like the next week when we were talking about somebody like and then the guest answered in the private chat. Oh, so I was like, oh, my God, that means last week he could totally see it. 
<laughs> that was, that was, that's also embarrassing to think about. But <clears throat> anyway, so things like What's that. I just want to crawl. Up. You don't need. A, you don't get traumatized now. You don't have to remember a bunch more embarrassing stuff. Okay, I'm done with remembering the embarrassing. Stuff. Like I'm getting I think really being sweaty. able to to relive and talk about those embarrassing moments also help you get over them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. maybe. No, it's true. It's and, uh, true. Like the one I was mentioning in clubhouse this morning that's the one that still stands out to me and i'm much more careful at checking my emails anymore um for those of you that weren't in clubhouse i had a i emailed to a planner viewer and his name was farhad and i was doing it on my phone i was on my way to a meeting so i did it really quick and sent it and then afterwards i realized autocorrect changed his name to fathead oh. instead of farhead. <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like that's so oh my goodness. That's not good when you're trying to ask a reviewer to like give you a little bit, <laughs> bit of leeway on a project. No. And then I had to try and sit there and like, do I say something and respond back oh, to him and be like, sorry, it was the autocorrect, or do I pretend like I never noticed that it did it? <laughs> he before I like well, I was still debating that he did respond back and he ignored it and just kind of, oh, here's the information you were looking for and stuff like that. So I'm like, okay, I'll just let this uh. one go. But it sticks in my brain and I'm like, okay, don't trust. The phone's you, on autocorrect. Make sure you I'm probably weren't the first one. Yeah, Poor and that's guy, though. Too. I'm like, if my phone autocorrected it, I bet he gets that often. <laughs> um, so Michelle says um, there are those conversations in the beginning of COVID when people would be chatting with me, but they didn't know that they were saying it to everyone, and I had to say, "Oh, you're saying that to everyone." Yeah. yeah, there are lots of Zoom. I'm back in the beginning of COVID. There were lots of funny Zoom viral videos of someone going to the bathroom while they were on Zoom and stuff. Like that. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. so how can we uh, how can we take the information in her book and use it for our own? Um, betterment i don't know what you would say i like to, yeah, she, to change ourselves to be she better did have a lot of because she interviewed other experts and had a lot of tips from when you know for the things that she was about to do mm -hmm. um but breathing and all the other you know even the first person who told her to ask a dumb question um that was pretty cool and then mm -hmm. um the the interesting thing about the friend dating now i oh yeah i, I was about wondering that. If, if you guys had any like my friends I've had for years and years and years and most of them still live right in town. So I don't have reason to, you know, and I live in the same town. So that I have lived in for a long time, I don't have reason, but I guess that could happen to a lot of people. If you move to a new town or if I didn't know if any of you had to felt like, Oh, that'd be so good. So when I was I on knew. the plane reading the book, the, I was telling the woman next to me who's retired, um, about what I was reading. She asked me what I was reading and I just happened to tell her that part of the book and she's retired and living on her own and said, there's such a thing as friend dating. And she said, I am, and she must be, you know, probably in her late sixties, seventies, you know, she's like, mm -hmm. I'm all over that. I'm going to do that. So I thought, yeah. wow. That's we, cool. should, we should tell everybody that that part of the book was when she did the, uh, Bumble BFF. Was it Bumble BFF or something oh, yeah. like was that? It just yeah. Or something. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like a it's um it's like a, a friend dating friend app, app, right? So yeah. you swipe left or right or whatever you do, like based on who's a friend. So Michelle, what you do is you meet for coffee or whatever. You're actually just looking for friends. Like it's it's mm -hmm. literally just friends. And um, I think, well, in her case, she was looking for woman friends. So she was she was just going out with or trying to match with women who were interested in meeting her. And sometimes it didn't go very well. Like when she invited all, she heard about somebody who invited however many guys to a baseball field. Oh, for that's right. Their speed Something, date. Yeah. <laughs> for their team. <laughs> yeah. It's just um, online dating, but with friends and stuff. I mean, since I'm not going to do online right. dating for dates, maybe a friend date thing. I, I just, that's, that's another thing. I feel like I couldn't do that. I really, do you feel like you could do that? That'd be so like putting yourself out there and like, here I am. You interested in me? No, no, yeah. nobody. Yeah. Yeah. The, the other people happening. you're finding on that are going, probably feeling the same way of, you know, you got to put yourself out there and they're probably as terrified of it too. Right. I, that one I could kind of relate to because I did move 2000 miles away from home to go to college and all of my family and friends are scattered. Most of them are still back East and not in Arizona. Um, 
and because I am an introvert, after I came moved out here, I really, I mean, there's people I know and I have acquaintances, but I really don't have any close friends here because mm-hmm. I'm not to go out and search them. And then the few that I have from when I was younger, where it's easy to make friends when you're in school, they're all on the other side of the country. So I mean, I've had times where I'm like, okay, if we want to do something or have a party or whatever, who am I going to invite? Like, it was I'm, a weird, it was a sad statistic when she talked about the older you get, the less friends you make yeah. and mm-hmm. all that. And I do think COVID and like Entre Architect really helped for us, like all meeting each other all at once. Mm-hmm. I feel like yeah. I've made so many more friends through this. Yeah. But mm-hmm. otherwise, if you didn't have this, you know, something like this going on, yeah. it would be limiting. Right. I still wouldn't do that friend date thing. I'm too scared of some crazy person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I would say I still don't have any like super close friends, but if there's, if I do want to go and do something, there's, I, because of the people that I've met from Andre Architect and the people I've met from being involved in my community and things like that, I have met people that are there, but I still prefer having, just coming home and not having to deal with people most of the time. But it also has made me kind of reach out and try and keep those connections with people and um, try and build some of those. And I know it was after, I forget what it was, one of the other context and clarity um, sessions that it was talking about how you should get out and meet people and networking. And maybe Jeff was talking about how he would do a cup of coffee with people all the time. And, Mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know what? I don't ever go out and do anything. So maybe I should. And like in the middle of that context and clarity, I sent a message to Janine Ng because she lives five miles from me. And I'm like, I know you're right here. We're both involved in this group, but never met. I'm like, let's go do coffee. Just let's go do something just to get out of the house. I'm like, and to get to see, meet some other people around here. And we do that at least like probably once a month or so that we get together and do coffee now and complain about our work and about the cities and (laughs) So it, I don't know. I didn't need the Bumble BFF because I reached out to the Entre Architect people in the area to instead of doing going through. Yeah, because the, yeah, then they're but, vetted, slightly vetted. But yeah, that was completely slightly out of my vetted. comfort zone just to make that attempt and just be like, put that offer up. Be like, yeah, we should meet. Just yeah, don't be so. friends with Rod because it says that his friends have either moved or died. So oh. yeah, but probably not because they're friends with him. <laughs> but he's a, he also said he skips a lot of things he's he's gone to previously. For example, they have a Bob Dylan birthday jam that I used to go to, and I've skipped the last couple and have not been going to the arts crawls and things of that sort. I know I haven't either, but is that because of COVID? I mean, part of it is that I'm not in a big hurry to be in a large crowd. Another thing is, like, I just feel really, really tired. I feel like I've gotten a lot of – I'm just really tired now, and I feel like all I want to do is go sleep. Yeah. So, or, um, or is he not doing as many of those things because he doesn't have anybody to go with them? Well, Maybe he's saying, hangs he, out needs with the, his, he needs the uh, Bumble BFF to go find. I mean, do they have Bumble BFF things. for men as well? I assume so. Maybe somebody, be. one of our audience members, could look it up right now and let us know. So, do you guys go to events on your own? Because usually for me, I don't no, go on my no, own, and I'll call Michelle or someone. Are you going? And then I'll be. <laughs> Oh, let's, I, mean, I do go to events to on my own. You not do. not social ones necessarily, but I I go to business I, things on my own. I'll but do I don't net, networking things. Um, yeah. What else do I do on? My if own? you don't know anybody. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I didn't used to. It's true. I didn't yeah. used to. I would I would be a nervous wreck, and I would just not want to go. And um, yeah. Okay, I would change. change I'm still I would there. do. <laughs> I would make the beeline to the corner like like Jessica did. And sit, you know, just mm-hmm. <laughs> well, do you go to um, like would you go to the rest of them? Or if I go by myself, I'll still sit there and be like, Yep, I don't really want to talk to anybody. And I'll be like, Should I go up to somebody? The, those people over there, maybe I'll join their conversation. And sometimes I get the courage to get up and do it. And sometimes I just sit there and be the mm. wallflower. And yeah, if I go and there's still a lot of times where I'm like, Yeah, maybe I shouldn't go, don't really want to go to this one alone, but or like going to Vermont. Like I didn't want to go up there all alone and meet the for the um, Ecclestock, and so I dragged my mom along. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> that was a good idea. Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna go and, see, like you said, a bunch of strangers in the woods, you should bring your mom with you. Yeah, <laughs> and it was it was good for her because she has like since I started my firm, she has been 
helping me out with the bookkeeping. So she's involved mm-hmm. in my company. And so hearing the business side of it, and it c- did give her a little bit more insight into our industry where she's used to, mm-hmm. she used to work for um, Michigan State University as wow. a admin secretary. So she was used to budgets and stuff going through that and how that type of business works. So seeing what we're doing, it, when she's trying to look at books, she's like, do you really need to spend this stuff or how does it work and what's this? And so it did give her some good understanding of, to help her understand what we go through and what our business really is. Yeah. Well, it's good that she get to, got to see that then. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I went to that alone kind of, I mean, I brought Jeff with me. So that was like weird because I mean, I don't really know any of you except for, I feel like I do. So it wasn't, I didn't feel yeah. like alone. And yeah. that was it's I just went alone kind of, but I knew John ahead of time. Yeah, even though I hadn't seen him in a million years. <laughs> That's true. You did know John. So Manuel says, in my older age, I've learned to not give a hoot about what anyone thinks. So now I go to events and ham it up. But this took me about 20 years to drum up the courage. It turns out that I'm very happy now going to events and chatting up with people. Oh, see, that's good. And oh, yeah. I think that was the story of the book, too. She felt better mm-hmm. reach, branching out. Yeah, like definitely. You're scared until you actually do it, then you're better for it. I would say it also took me 20 years. <laughs> Um, I like more. to say I don't care what anybody thinks, and yet somehow I must because things scare me too much to to do them. So I have mm-hmm. to. I'll have to really write about that. Figure out what the, what's the issue. Some things yeah, I just don't want to do because all I really just want to go to sleep. Like I don't want to go because <laughs> I don't want to see people I know. I don't want to have to talk to them about how I am or anything. I just want to go huh. to sleep. So I feel like everybody <laughs> feels that way, and I'm like everybody I, I talk to, they're like they're just tired all the time. And they have no energy and. We're like, okay, is this a getting older thing? Is this a COVID thing that makes everybody more tired just because of the lifestyle of things? Or I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I used to, um, I used to like to go out, and I would I go out for dinner by myself. Yeah, I think I could do that. I think if I'm going to do that, I think if we are going to, I don't know if we're going to challenge each other to do any of these things. But if we did, like, I think uh, uh, there need to be some rules. Of course, I mean that's not surprising that I need to have some rules. <laughs> But that, <laughs> I like, maybe not bringing my phone. Like, I think you should be able to bring a notebook, let's oh, say, or a sketchbook yeah. or something like that. But not your phone, because then you're just sitting there. Yeah, that doesn't count. Then. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't that's really good. count. Are you alone yeah. if you have your phone? That's what I'd like to know. I don't I don't mess with my phone when I'm alone. Like, if I order a sandwich or something and I'm waiting, I just stand around and look at everybody. I don't I don't scroll. Because yeah, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to lose that, you know, paying attention. Yeah. And, yeah, connecting to the world, kind of, even if they're just moving by you. Serendipitous account encounters, and yeah. So. Um, John wanted to know about my client date today. Um, well, I was looking up their address, so Googling her name for to find the address, and it turns out she had written to me in February, and I did not respond to her in February. And then her husband wrote through my website, and then that's how we started talking, and so I, I, I started off the date saying, hey, I noticed that I never wrote back to you on um, Valentine's Day when you wrote to me. And um, sorry about that. I really hate being that person who doesn't write back at all. I, I happened to be at Fiddle Camp at the time, and I don't know what happened. It's just like, you know, just got swept away in all the emails, I guess. But anyway, so that's how it started. But I think they like me, and they're going to go, they're going to um, hire me. So that's good. Oh, that is good. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was embarrassing. It was a little embarrassing, but um, I made it through. My pants didn't split. And <laughs> in the end, I just had to eat some humble pie. That's all. <laughs> um, I, how do you pronounce that? Manuel says, but I did once go to Gala Torres by myself in New Orleans and had a blast with the table next to me filled with complete strangers. Well, that's true. I can have good, depending on the strangers, I can have a good time with strangers. So it's... Yeah. I mean, sometimes I like people, but I think I'm not going, I don't like, I think I'm not going to like them. <laughs> you know, I think I'm my not going to have the energy to talk to them. My parents have always been more of the extroverts and very social and talking to people and they can start up conversations with almost anybody. My dad doesn't know how to stop conversations. He'll talk forever. And I think I picked up on some of that now that I've come out of my shell. <laughs> um, but then like for Sit, talking to strangers so when we were after vermont we went to boston where my brother lives there and then while we were there we went to the cheers bar because of course you go to go, boston is a tourist you got to go to the cheers bar my mom was the, is the type where okay you're at cheers everybody's supposed to know your name so 
She learned the name of every person in there. Anybody that came in, first question they got asked was my mom going up to them. So what's your name? And then she'd introduce everybody else at the restaurant. Oh my gosh. And so it just turned into like a couple hours of whoever walks in. I'm like, okay, what's your name? Okay, Julie from, where are you from? Okay, you're from Australia. This is Peter. This is Matt. This is... And, she just oh my gosh. She knew everybody. That's it was amazing. So That's amazing. That might, so you I, did, it, they did not rub off on you at all then, right? <laughs> Well, bit. maybe that's why you weren't like hiding from people because your yeah. mom was just like that. <laughs> um, did, did, what's it like in there? I've never actually been in the Cheers bar. I haven't either. <laughs> I've been upstairs, but not downstairs where I guess everybody want, wanted well, to go. Last I heard the upstairs is, or at least when we were there, the upstairs was closed, which they hmm. say the upstairs is supposed to look like the one on the show. Oh. The downstairs one is very tiny, um, but... It's a lot of fun. So they got some tables on the back and then you got the bar area, but it's really not that big. So you kind of get squished in there. And so that does make it more fun when you're having to talk to everybody and introduce everybody Mm -hmm. because there's probably only 20 people in the whole place. So, Hmm. Um, Well, one of you before we came on said that you had written down a question. I did write down, well, we talked about the the friend dating and... We talked about the, um, I guess that was one of the things, but the other thing was I, the small talk thing, I totally agree that I don't, I can't, I don't want to do small talk and I, um, notice it a lot. (laughs) Like there's this particular group that I've gone with. I'm like, where's the meat here? Like, where's the, like, that wasn't, that was fine but it wasn't rewarding. So what is, know? what is small talk? Is that kind of like, well, what would count as, as small the talk? Weather. Like when do you cross the line into deep talk or what is that even called? Deep talk, yeah. big talk. I mean, obviously well, saying so like, she got some advice on that too. That was the, Oh, questions, questions that had. Oh, right. Where she was asking people something. like, do you feel lonely? You that sort feel of thing. Right. Yeah. 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 It, getting past the, how are your kids doing? What grade is your daughter in? And things that are just kind of the right. surface things and getting it into. It could be so, anybody's yeah. answer. Yeah. How do you feel about this thing? And yeah, I don't remember exactly what any of the questions were either, but. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. deeper things. What What's your most embarrassing moment? Like we were talking about and right. I'm, those types of things that you really are getting to learn about the inside of the person and get yeah. beyond the mask that we all put up. Mm-hmm. Well, oh. I think I think it might be time for me to get into a little bit of um, discomfort. <clears throat> uh oh, not right now, not right now. Talk. <laughs> but I mean, am I having an existential crisis? I'm not even sure what that is, Rod. What is what is? Where do you go from regular crisis to um, existential crisis? Like when you're wondering about what your existence means? Is that? An, well, yeah, I'm on kind of on that most. <laughs> I can bring that up every day. Michelle <laughs> says, I did go on a hike with a group of people and the people wanted to small talk with me and I was hiking and I can't hike and talk about anything. And I got mad and turned around and walked down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, that is so, I don't know. I'm surprised <laughs> to hear that. Yeah, that is surprising. Rod so, said, um, just some small talk. Okay, I don't know. He's replying to him. Oh. Replying to himself? Is he replying to himself? Replying um, to Rod. Yeah. So was it all any talking, Michelle, or was it just the small talk? Because I wouldn't care for that one bit. But if someone was deep talking, then that would be okay. Deep talking. What yeah. is that deep talking called? Having a deep conversation, I guess. Yeah. Isn't that what she said? They said in the book, deep talk? Yeah, something like that. Oh, I don't know. I don't remember. It's a whole Brene Brown kind of vulnerability Vulnerability mm-hmm. that came up again, yeah. Mm-hmm. Vulnerability, vulnerability. Yeah. So, okay, <clears throat> I keep trying to bring it back to how we, this can improve our relationships as architects, right? To our clients. I mean, um, well, maybe just, just having the boldness to do things that not feel. Well, I think for fun. me, like m- meeting potential clients. I don't get out there at all. So, you know, you can do good work, but no one knows if you're not marketing and you're not out there 
talking to people and then you just get frustrated with the people that are just mediocre getting all these projects and you're like, yeah, mm. but they know how to get out there. So <laughs> getting out, yeah. just pushing yourself to get out there to, to do it. I got that out of the book. I can't yeah. hide in the, the off, well, home office. I guess we could go around and say, how vulnerable do you want to be as a design professional? I overshare, I think because of my um, neurodivergent self, I overshare too much. I don't know if anyone's ever noticed. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so I just mostly spend my time cringing. Um, and I do overshare sometimes as an architect, because the thing is, we do things that are really, pro we design spaces that are for people's private lives as if we're doing residential work. So, um, so yeah, I've overshared about things or I've been like in this situation, when I get really embarrassed and I just want to run away, my hair kind of all feels like it's standing up. Do you guys have that <laughs> feeling that, and then you just want to run off? Do you have that feeling? Mm -hmm. Like it's, no. <laughs> no, it's like, it doesn't feel like it's standing up. Like it's obviously not standing up, but, and then also then it gets kind of like, um, like fizzy. My skin feels kind of fizzy. Hmm. Wow. And I'm I'll I have to be on the lookout for that. Yeah. Now what about you do podcasts? Are you there's yeah. a comfort level in that? Or yeah, does that I mean, make uh, well it's because I can talk to people about what they're doing and I don't have I mean I cringe a lot at what I say a lot of the time, but I mean I'm just kind of used to that now, I guess, and I try not to I can also do the rough editing on my own podcast where I cut my 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 things out. On um, context and clarity, I can't. And so I don't listen to context and clarity because I can't <laughs> cut it out can't bear listening to the things that I sometimes um end up saying so um Michelle says uh well they were talking about going to Mexico and I said I didn't want to go to Mexico and they said well why not and I said because I don't drink and they said well what about a resort and I said no because I don't like to be around a lot of people on vacation and they said well what would it take to get me down there and I said I don't know maybe if I had a project where I would Oh, project there I would. I guess I'm not a very fun person. Did you yell that or did you just <laughs> type it in yelling? And then I left. I guess I'm not a very fun person. Well, okay. I guess I took care of them. You didn't have to talk to them anymore, especially after after leaving. Um, how, well, how vulnerable do you want to be as a design professional, Rod? Oh, anyway. Uh, so, Wendy. Well, what do you, what did you get out of the, out what of the did book? I get out of the book? I got, I, I feel like, um, even though I was, was gradually on my way to be more comfortable speaking in front of other people, meeting new people, I feel like I definitely had, you know, got some more, uh, insight and examples of, um, ways to be even more comfortable. So that was good. Um, yeah. I, you know, one part I thought was really interesting was the end where she has that Thanksgiving, meal at her house <clears throat> and then she talks about how um and i used to have a lot of parties now i don't have parties but i used to have a lot of parties and um what she said about being um it's easier to have your own party because you can be busy the whole time you don't have to talk to people and you're you know you're doing something else so there's no pressure for you really to be just chatting with people you know so i thought that was kind of an insight i hadn't thought about before that as I just feel more comfortable doing stuff than just standing around talking to people. So if, um, mm -hmm. if I'm passing hors d'oeuvres or something, let's say, then I don't have to talk to people very long because I just have my little tray of thing and I'm like doing something that I don't, I don't have to just stand around. So I don't know, thought that was uh, huh. kind of inspired me to maybe have more people over to my house because I'd much rather have my own party than go to someone else's party. Really? Yeah. And I yeah. realize why, because what she wrote. So, hmm. Hmm. um, uh, Michelle also said, well, then the person in charge was calling me on my phone and I got the message and I said, well, I just didn't want to talk at 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning and I'm trying to hike up a mountain. Did this happen recently, Michelle? Because I feel like you texted me about that. Just came back to me, the part about it being 7 a.m. and you didn't want to try to talk to people. Um, anyway, I, I when I read the book, I kind of felt like I should really just push my own... Um, you know, I should challenge myself to do things like this, like the stand up, which I find terrifying. The idea is I'm like, terrifying. Go, actually, no, I would rather go out for dinner by myself 
write up an act and give it on the stage. Oh, did you guys watch Marvelous Mrs. Maisel? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was, like, so tense. So many times I was like, oh, oh yeah. Oh, she's, like, bombing so much more than she <laughs> succeeded that. Yeah. Oh, just the idea of that is so scary. So then because that was that's so it was scary. Funny, though. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was funny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was, you know. A show, but that's actually a show. So that's not a real life because that was somebody wrote that. Was a show. Right. But because that scares me so much or if there are things that scare us, should we do those things to kind of build our character or whatever, I guess it would be building? I think we should still do them. I had this thing where I, but the part of the problem is you have to feel like if you have conviction, then you can like get almost through anything, I feel like. I had to, or I didn't have to, but I decided to make a presentation to the school committee about energy. This is a few years ago, pre-COVID, and there was a good 50 people in the room, and um, I knew that there were going to be, and I I knew a handful, but not very many, and I wrote up this gigantic thing. It ended up taking 12 minutes, um, and I was a nervous wreck, but I was like, I this is my chance. I really have to say this. Um, so I guess if you are prepared, like she was the first time when she did the comedy the first time, she was really prepared. Mm-hmm. Um, when so she did now, the stand up act, you mean? Yeah. So now having done that, which was terrifying, you know, to say something controversial, basically, to try to get, you know, to talk about a vote that we were about to do, um, it was. You know, so now that's behind me, and and uh, yeah. I so you're glad you, but you're question. glad you did it, and now I'm you glad did I did it. Yeah, I'm glad I did it. Yep. Yeah, hmm. I, it, I. That's the, probably one of my big takeaways. Is yeah, the fear's still there, but it don't let it stop you. It's it's not really not as scary as what your brain likes to think it is. Yeah, and the thing is, nobody else knows what you're going through on the inside. And most of them are going through the same thing. That's like, I know when she's talking to people on the bus or on the trains and things like that, she's like, had seen, said she saw a statistic that was like 50% of people or 45% of people will want to talk to other people when they're on a train or on a bus. And she found that pretty much all of them do. If you sit there and start up a conversation, almost everybody's going to talk back with you and that they're going to engage in that i used to like to um before covid now i don't seem to talk to anybody out in public but before covid i used to like to talk to people i couldn't really help myself and i had to talk to people in the checkout line about the headlines that were on the magazines there at the checkout (laughs) especially the ones where they talk about like um you know flat stomach in 30 days like how could they even say that what are they they don't even know what someone's stomach looks like like (laughs) I don't know. I find those so irritating. And then, then in the same women's magazine, they also have cake recipes. Like, which one is it? Are we going with a cake? Are we going with a flat stomach? And also, what kind of promises are you making? So I'd say stuff like that to random people in the line. And some of them would be like, uh-huh. And other people would talk, you know? So that could be a whole stand-up routine right there. <laughs> right. Oh, I have plenty to say about the stupid women's magazines. <laughs> I think Catherine has a has a – what was it? Five minutes? I think you got five minutes if you, if yeah. you start, five minutes if you of start material. writing sure. some stuff up. Yeah, I think so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is like too much to think. But I mean, if I did that, that would be such an accomplishment. Like she did it and you know, like was totally bombed in Scotland. Like she just talked about that the whole rest of the book. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, that, that was, was a big so, one. That's a big bomb. Scott. That oh, was that a big bomb. bomb. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. But when people actually boo, at least they're interacting, you know, if they're booing at you. Well, you know, I always like to challenge, um, like to set goals and challenge. Does anybody else want to do that? Any of you? Are you willing to do any of the things that she said in the book? Like go to a mystery place? You don't know where you're going alone. Would anybody want to do that? That seems expensive and time. Yeah, that seems expensive. A lot of time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, taking an improv class. Well, there is that one down the street. I'll check the I prices. I would consider that, but I don't. I, I'm where I'm am, and we don't have a lot of things. So. Okay, so yeah. Wendy can't do that. There must be like um, a Zoom improv. There's Zoom everything now. 
<laughs> Probably. That's true. Hmm. Um, so what I else? was just looking up, and so I know we're talking about the, when she was trying to do the deep talking, the mm -hmm. first oh, one, yeah. she had gone to somebody and was asking, what's the worst thing you've ever done? I don't oh, know right. that we want to enter that on permanently recorded video necessarily, <laughs> but yeah, we don't, that's an interesting don't. one. Just to go up to random straight, was it random strangers or was it I think people she was at a networking event? In. It was that yeah. painter, yeah. Yeah. And what had he done? I don't remember. He set fire uh -huh. to the school, well, uh, the, not yeah. the school, the studio in he high school. He burned down the art department at the school. When oh, yeah. He was a teenager. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's pretty bad. But you know, yeah. we don't ask each other that, so maybe all of us have done things equally bad. Wait, friend dating? Maybe Nicole could do friend dating. I um, would be really uncomfortable to do friend dating too, so I could do that. We um, all need to go invite be... somebody out to for coffee. Somebody or that we go don't to know. Coffee by ourselves and sit there, and people watch. But then you have to find somebody and talk to them, talk get them to, to sit with you. Yeah, I know, but we can COVID sort of thing would, um, yeah, would be, I don't know. I mean, where I live anyway, people are still staying away from each other and wearing masks, which personally I love, love wearing a mask because I know it's like a dream come true. I don't have to see anybody, <laughs> I just have a mask on. <laughs> um, but I've, I, during the height of COVID when people were all wearing masks, I was really surprised when people would recognize me. I felt really safe, like I was had an invisibility cloak oh. on and I wouldn't have to talk to anybody like at the store. Yeah. But they somehow would recognize me anyway. Somebody <laughs> recognized me today that I hadn't seen in almost five years. <laughs> well, that was cool. Which I did. I, I, I thought, oh, she, her eyes look familiar. And then she says, oh, are you Wendy? <laughs> wow. So. We were We both masks. had masks on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I didn't so know her very well either. So that was surprising. Yeah. So um, you can't hide even from people you don't know very well. Yeah, no, you can't hide, which is why I don't like going out because you're bound to run into someone that you know. So I should probably look deeper into that, but um, I don't think I could ever. So the thing I'm most so which okay, improv, stand up, best friend or dating app, friend dating, friend dating app, or Going to something by yourself. Um. Uh, yeah, like a networking event by yourself. Yeah, the networking. That doesn't seem that unusual, though. I bet we could all no. we just all do that. Um, yeah, going to the that. desert and eating peyote buttons or whatever they had. <laughs> well, yeah, but what's mushrooms? The point of that? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't understand what that had to do with anything. Did that require? Um, it was just out of her comfort zone, I guess. But that I wasn't. Guess, and maybe they like, were all strangers. Were they all strangers to her? No, I can't um, remember. Well, just one of either. one of them was her friend, and then the other people, like there were three, two other people maybe, and they were not her friends, and then she found the woman really annoying. But that seems standard Rod to me. Rod commented that he takes his dog to the coffee shop and usually gets into deep conversations about dogs. Yes, but dogs are good for that. How, how deep? <laughs> is, is he initiating those conversations, or is it people of approaching him and starting the conversations because of the dog? I've kind of found that if I have the well, dogs, I, people will be like, oh, that's such a cute dog. And then they start talking about it. And so it's usually well, that's how to that those. have a dog. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good icebreaker. Dogs yeah. for sure. Good icebreaker. It makes it much easier when the other person approaches you. It's not as scary then. It's easy to respond and talk back. But so oh, yeah, I don't know. But has somebody talk to him and approach him about start talking about dogs. You need to ask them what's the worst thing they've ever done in their life. Make sure that your worst thing wasn't that they like went and were like a dog yeah. serial killer or something like that. Right. Ah, <laughs> uh, what if somebody came up to you and asked you, "What's the worst thing you've done in your life?" Would you actually tell them what the worst thing you did was? I mean, would no, you know stranger? offhand? I can't think right now, but no. Yeah, I, I'd have to think about the worst. What the worst thing is, but possibly, I've gotten much more open, and I think that especially with context and clarity and a lot of our talks here, we do get into those deeper conversations and we do yeah. show that vulnerability in here, which is one of the things I love about. It. And that's why a lot of us do feel like friends in here because we have opened up to that point. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, and it hasn't been that scary to be vulnerable to people. And I do think that the more we do that, the more connections we do make and we do get deeper connections with people by being vulnerable. And, and I think that's the, if it's just the small talk of the time, 
we still feel alone because, yeah, they're just acquaintances. They're not really friends. And so that's kind of the main way to get past that, I think, is answer the hard questions. What is Michelle getting upset here with Rod? Probably not. <laughs> Def not. Oh, no, it's the same. It's the same comment, maybe. So what? she's not just continually saying yeah. Def not. Def <laughs> not, Rod. Def not. Oh, yeah. That's right. um, I don't know what that is about, though. Um, anyone seen that play Come From Away? Is that what it's called? Come From? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. The, the one about 9-11. Oh, I, I just saw it, and it was amazing. If it ever... Oh, is that the one where they... The, is that where the Canadians are taking care of the people? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is oh, amazing. Oh, I need to see that. It's a it good is am amazing. But the idea of um, a situation like that, and then you have a closer relationship just out of context. I know she talked about that in the book. If there's yeah. you know, turbulence on a plane and people connect, you can connect faster if because you're instantly more vulnerable knowing something bad could happen. So that kind of focused on that, that yeah. you can get to know people really well. And What was she saying? It took a certain number of hours otherwise. How many right. years? It was a really long time. A but long yeah. time. A long like time. Yeah, there were different tragedy things. Was coming. But if or something that. tragic happens, it's like immediate, yeah. immediate connection. Yeah. So I believe that. Yeah. Well, I still am interested to know what small talk is versus deep talk. But whether you know, talk no, Catherine, it, like if... I mean, I know what small talk is, but then how much small, like, when does it switch from small to deep? <laughs> when does it switch? Or, you know, I mean, I think it's like size-wise, if you line it up, like, talking about how humid it is, that's small talk, right? Yeah. I would say you can always be distracted from small talk. It's easy. Like, if someone, like, you're at a table and someone's like, oh, look, I got, here's a picture of my dog or my daughter did this or that or whatever. And then all of a sudden, if someone says something that's deep talk, and then you're like, Phew. okay, now I'm really paying attention. Yeah, and, it's personal. Yeah. You know, who cares who's coming in and out of the door at the restaurant or what? you know, because now mm. you're like, oh, this is important stuff. Or okay. I don't know. I, I guess that's, to me, that's what it would feel like switching from small talk to deep talk. So there's no medium talk. If you're talking about like your marriage or something, would that be medium talk? It seems like that's not small talk or is that small talk? If it you're talking about like if you're talking about the fights okay. between your husband or if you're just saying, yep, yeah, I'm married and have kids. And if you're yeah, just that's definitely husband, small. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's small. right. But yeah, if but you start talking even, about, yeah, we had this fight about whatever, whatever, and start getting into more details on it. And once you start opening up and beyond the surface stuff and the stuff that's vulnerable and that you're like, maybe I shouldn't share this stuff. Hmm. that's kind of the way I take it if, if it's okay. something that's hard to say and put out there in public you're getting into the deeper stuff yeah I mean I know it when I see it I was just wondering like small how much of it is small is it all small maybe I'm tired of small talk I don't know um do we have small talk or medium talk or deep talk on this um you know context and clarity hmm a little bit of all yeah. Depends on the topic, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I would say yeah. me mostly medium. Medium. Which medium. makes me think that there is medium talk then. <laughs> like yeah. slightly well, personal, but not not oversharing. Yeah. yeah. Not your Because we have a lot of comedy too. A lot of humor and in... Yeah, we do, which is nice yeah. to have a place to go where you enjoy the people and can laugh. Yeah, so that's medium, right? Because that's not small or deep I guess. yeah i don't know small talk probably can't you can't laugh at small talk i'm gonna guess right small well, talk's no. not funny <laughs> small talk's not funny just cut that out I mean, if, if it's if that small talk is not necessarily talking about things you're with yourself i mean because then oh here yeah, someone has a really good things about yourself but, that is that is funny but it's but you're like, if you start talking about, yeah, my dog did this and this and this, it's still small talk and it can still be funny, but it's not about you then. It's about other people. So, about you know what? I'm going to go outside after this. I'm going to see my neighbor, Alice, who's like 68 or whatever. I'm going to say, hey, Alice, hi, how are you doing? What's the worst thing you've ever done? <laughs> see what she like. Yes, you report back. Uh, yeah, and I'll tell you <laughs> what she says. 
<laughs> we have a comment from Matthew on here saying that small talk yeah. is people, medium is events, and deep talk is ideas. Ah. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. And he also says all levels can be funny. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, he know. seems to have yeah, like expertise funny. on this. Yeah, so Matthew, <laughs> since you know, um, what is like a funny bit of small talk? Because like, I think of small talk as like, oh, where are you from? I'm from Indiana, wherever. I mean, it's not funny. <laughs> that is not funny. I, I would say if you're talking about like what it, your kids did and things that they're doing, that's still small talk stuff, but it can be funny Thank stuff. because. Well, so but then like this yeah. morning when John shared his his running out of Disneyland and all that. That yeah. was sharing something that happened and then but it was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. So, that was, but that wasn't small talk, right? Right. That wasn't small talk. Right. But I guess was it deep? I don't know. Yeah, he admitted it to us. Indiana's funny. It might be actually. I don't I've only been on the highway in Indiana. I'm not sure I've ever stopped. <laughs> I've never stopped moving in Indiana, I think. I think Indiana can always be funny, funny, but can you can you show it with your hand? on the map and tell people where you lived. And I'm originally from Michigan. So that was the one that was always like, yeah, I grew Michigan. up right that's, there. Well, that's why, yeah, you think of the hand, like Massachusetts is like, I live, um, yeah. okay, so pretend the state ends here and I live, or no, I guess it would be like this. We need, we need the cape, though. I guess it would be like this. <laughs> I don't know. I can't. <laughs> I've never so used a hand. Like a big box. Like, yeah. Massachusetts? Well, it's a box. And then it's no, kind of Arizona, like, she said. Oh, Arizona, Arizona. Yeah. 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 Well, that'd be like your palm. So you live Except right there. Except for that's too tall. So it's it's probably more like that size. <laughs> I live <Yeah>. there. <laughs> Although with the that Michigan one, I always felt weird. bad for the people that lived in the Upper Peninsula because you're like, yep, here's Michigan. Well, what about these people up here? <laughs> <laughs> Rod says geography is not funny. <laughs> so Indiana is okay. funny, but not geography. Mm -hmm. That's what Rod says. Well, what, mm. what even is funny? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a very subjective question. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Which is why it would be hard to write a comedy act, right? Yeah. I guess it kind of comes from, um, for me, I think it comes from not expecting whatever it was that just happened or somebody said. So. Huh. We have a lot of arguments around here because I don't think any kind of farting joke is funny. I don't see that it's funny at all. Just do not see why that's funny. But my family disagrees with me and I don't <laughs> see the humor at all in it. I don't know why anybody thinks that's funny. And I'm not, I, I'm the type where I don't usually see a lot of humor and people hurting themselves or falling down and all of those blooper videos. And I'm like, yeah, no, those are horrible fun. to watch. They're hard to but watch. But a lot of people think they're fun not be that popular. I know, but I don't, I, I also don't like pranks where somebody gets hurt or somebody looks like an idiot or mm -hmm. people are laughing because the person's acted like, you know, Maybe. they were fooled or something like that. Like those aren't funny. Mm -hmm. I think those are sad. Yeah. I don't like this. That's too sad. But all right. So anyway, we did not get to what we might challenge ourselves to do based on to uh, enlarge our personalities or whatever you would call it. Um, based on the book, you don't have to. But I'm just wondering if anybody would be willing to. I don't know if we need to necessarily do something specific, but I think we should all do something that pushes that comfort zone, and that's going to be different for each of us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do we want to say what it is right now? That. I don't know. It's probably going to have to be something when I feel like I'm getting out of the house and not like being antisocial. Maybe that's what I have to do is this weekend I need to get out of the house and not spend the whole three day weekend at home being antisocial <laughs> in my comfort zone. Mm. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> because that's absolutely what I want to do is just spend three days and not leave. <laughs> I know that's what I want to do too. And now I'm thinking, well, but that's really what I want to do. So why would I do anything else? I already have you might meet somebody really Saturday. interesting. I might. My daughter wants to travel by herself. She wants to go to the movies all the time by herself. And I think she's lying. What are you? Why would you go to the movies <laughs> by lying. yourself? <laughs> like, who are you meeting in Cambridge? Why do you have to go all the way to Cambridge to go to the movies? Like, we have movies in Arlington. I just can't <laughs> understand that she'd want to go out to the you know, dinner and movie by herself. 
<laughs> that one was always a tough one for me until I moved out here. And then I went about five years after I moved to Arizona where I was going to school, didn't have a boyfriend, had zero interest in dating or getting involved, didn't have any really close friends. So it was either I eat at home or if I wanted to do anything, I was going out by my own, on my own and I'd go out to eat on my, by myself. And it took me, it was probably at least a year or two of living here where I would not go to a restaurant. If I did, it was takeout because I'd go home and eat it. But I went sit down there alone and finally realized that that's kind of stupid. I refused to go anywhere because I didn't know yeah. anybody because I'm never going to meet anybody at home. And that was one of the well, things that my mom was yeah. always bugging me to. She's like, you need to go out, make friends. You need to go find some. I, you're not going to meet anybody if you're sitting in a house. You're going to have to find a husband or a boyfriend at some point. And my attitude was always, I'm comfortable at home. If I go out of my comfort zone to try and meet a boyfriend, they're not going to be the right person because they're I'm meeting them doing things that I'm not comfortable doing. And like, eventually he'll show up at my front door. Or I'll get into a car accident or something and it'll happen when it happens. And then I met my neighbor who lived two apartments down from me and we had lived oh next God, to each other for oh, five years. Like, yeah, your car accident. <laughs> yep. We lived yeah. next to each other for five years before we actually met because we were both kind of that introvert at that time. Oh, and then we've been married. We're coming up to our eighth year, but we've been together for like 13 years and oh, that's because we were, and I'm like, they just showed up at home. I, I yeah, she don't, said, don't uh, my lifestyle. Her neighbor two two floors yeah. up or something. Hannah, maybe. She said she a couple times possible new best friend. You know, so yeah. Right, so, up, right in her own building. Well, yeah. Michelle so Michelle tells would, me that my daughter's seeing someone. She doesn't want to tell me. Uh oh, yeah, probably. Uh oh. I'm going I, to I, LA I tomorrow. I'm meeting with Mandy. Rod Warner, that's where she goes, the Brattle Theater. So, yeah. Um, all right. So let's get back to what we're going to commit to. I'm going to do something like maybe I'll go on the Friends app to make friends. Ooh. I think my my husband would probably be upset because I'm pretty sure he wouldn't think it was just a Bumble Friends app, you know, Bumble so BFF. maybe he'd get upset. But it I is a different app, right? It's not just like all mixed together. It's a Friends app. No, no. It's not yeah. all mixed together. But yeah. I still like if he said to me, "I'm going on a Bumble um, <laughs> BFF, going on the BFF app to make some friends." You're like, okay, that seems weird that you would do that. Huh. Of course, signing so up for the app is that. one thing, but then getting into the deep conversations or inviting them to go do something is completely different. So you can't just I, get on the app. I think you need to start right. those deep conversations and ask somebody what's the worst thing they've ever done. Yeah. Now, oh, I, I have ready. an idea now. I can't really find some improv near me and I can't really, some of the other things I can't really do. But the group that I was having trouble where I'm feeling like it's all small talk, mm. I'm going to try to, well, force it. I'm going to try to see if they can do deep talk next time I mm, get together with them. Go. That's what I'll do. Let's see what happens. You're going to go out with that group of, is that a group of friends you've had forever? Um, there, no, no, those people I have no problem with deep talk. It's yeah. a group, um, it's a different group, yeah, of not they, like acquaintances more, yeah. No, like, are they a group of women or like you're going out socially, yeah. or is it a, a group of women? Like yep, yep. So, all right, so are you gonna report back about that? Not sure. on the air, we don't have to. Oh, look, it's already 5 15. We, we gotta go. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> it's happy hour. Wow, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> five o'clock like somewhere. I, he just brought me my drink up here and my, and look how melted it is already. Oh, it's what pretty, was it? It's pretty hot up here. It's um a spindrift lime. Oh. Yep. A lime spindrift. That's our sponsor for this book club. <laughs> um, well, we're going to, we're going to talk to her uh, next week. Are we going to have questions for her? Sure. We may all have stories for her of what we did this week to push ourselves out of the comfort zone. Oh, that would be oh, good. Oh, no, Nicole. That, we have to do I think week. that's our goal is we need to have <laughs> some, that, that's our goal is whatever it is, whatever you're pushing to get out of the comfort <sighs> zone, you need to have you're it done right. by next week so we can tell yeah. her during Wait, the Wait, so is she Thursday or when is she next week? Thursday. She's our guest okay. on Thursday. Oh, that only... <gasps> A week. It's going to take me that long. Well, it is a long weekend, so we have time up. to embarrass ourselves this weekend. Obviously, we yeah. can't sign up for an improv class. No. We can go to an open Maybe mic and tell some jokes. I don't know. I The other day online, 
there was a, um, I think it was on Facebook, it, there was an ad that came up. This is not what I'm doing, by the way. <laughs> um, but it definitely would be out of the comfort zone that they have drawing classes with a drink, but it's of nude male models. And I'm like, oh. that would probably be really good for bachelorette parties or something like that. But I'm just like, <laughs> I'd be embarrassed to even go to one of those props. But Drawing the nude models? Well, you're drinking with a bunch of girls. Oh, yeah. That I've does seem, modeling. Uh, that's I, I've gone to nude modeling classes back when I was doing art classes and stuff when I was younger. So I've done those before. But yeah. Interestingly enough, when high school we had um, my senior year, I had a bunch of some art classes and the teacher actually encouraged us. He's like, once a week at the college nearby, they do have open nude modeling classes. And he encouraged all of us to go. Uh, not on the same days or anything. And I went to one of them. I don't think I told my parents I was going to to it, but I'm like, were you the model or you were drawing? No, we were drawing. <laughs> and would I went and I went by myself to it also on that one, just probably because I didn't want to admit to any of my friends that I was going to it. But I was very surprised to have a high school teacher that encouraged high school kids to go to it. But well, it's for drawing purposes. It is, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, see, that I don't find very embarrassing or whatever. Like, I would not be a model. I don't think I would be a model. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Oh, it's just the thought of that. Okay, so we'll have, we have until next <laughs> Thursday to do something yeah. that puts us out of our comfort zone. Something and all great. of the people who haven't even read the book can still do that they as well. read the book. Yeah. 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 Yeah, even if you don't read the book, get something out of your comfort zone. There you go. And, um... All right, we're going to report back here. Or how about the four of us? We can write in a little group chat. Yeah, group Facebook or yeah. something. Perfect. Good. Well, thanks for joining the book club today. Thank you. It's it was, fun. It was, um, yeah, it was fun. And it's a fun book to read. So, I mean, even if someone hasn't read it yet, you should you should just read it. It might inspire you to go out and, and maybe find something you love that you had no idea you were going to love. So, do you ever go to the movies in the nude by yourself? Oh no! <laughs> what? <Wait, bro. laughs> no, by myself in the nude, either in the nude or not. No. Follow up question is: Did you ever get arrested? <laughs> because you would. <laughs> <laughs> you would. You I, would. I, if you're going to do that one, depending on the type of people you hang out with, you might have to go alone. Because I'm not sure that anybody I know would want to go with me if I was going to go to the movie theater alone. Or go to the movie naked. theater naked. So. Yeah, I mean, that's just awkward. So we don't need to have awkward situations, just like personal growth. Uh, I mean, she yeah. ended up loving the comedy and loving the improv. Make and... some connections. Yep. All right. Deep talk. All right, I'm going to have to figure out what deep it's going to be. All right. That's deep talk. Good. Right. Actually, my my um my husband just went over to the neighbor's house. I could go over there and do some deep talk, <laughs> but I think I'm going to lie down instead. So, <laughs> aren't you inspired, Catherine? Go do some I know, deep you talk. S- you still want to go lie down? It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. I, I just thought those particular neighbors. I'm not. I, I okay. I'll go. I'll go next door. But that's not going to be my thing. Okay. Okay. That's All right. I'm going to do something else that's more. I don't know what it's going to be. How exciting. All right. So we'll check in. Thanks, um, everybody. We'll be talking to Jessica Pan next Thursday. Everybody have a good weekend. And um, have a good, safe weekend. Yeah. And I don't know. Just enjoy it. I'm going to take Monday off, maybe. Me too. Why not? Probably. And sleep. Okay. All right, everyone. Bye. Bye.